And now, now, it's Boomer Life, lifestyle discussion designed to make your life more engaging, meaningful, and complete. Celebrating the baby boomer generation, this is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. And welcome to Boomer Life on CL650. I'm Joanne Sutton and joined this hour by our friends and experts from the Alzheimer's Society of British Columbia. Our goal here is to help educate and inform you about the programs and services offered by the Alzheimer's Society and how they can help you and the community that you live in. So I'm joined in studio today with the CEO of the Alzheimer's Society, Maria Howard. Thanks for being here, Maria. Oh, thanks, Joanne. It's always great to come. It's always great to have you as well. Now, Maria has a, has a, you have your bio is, is way too long to explain right now, but let me tell you that Maria has decades of leadership experience in the healthcare sector, and she's been an extremely strong voice for the society as an advocate for Alzheimer's and other dementias, spearheading changes that are necessary in this province to be able to support an aging population and needs for proper care and quality of life as we all as baby boomers move on to that next stage. So Maria, last month on the show, we focused a lot on family and we spoke with the family. We had Pat and Roger Howard here as guests and they are living with dementia. Then they remain very connected to the Alzheimer's Society. Roger is also one of the honorees for the Investors Group Walk for Alzheimer's coming up on May 1st. Last month, we also met Dorothy LeClaire, one of the Society's Support and Education Coordinators for the North Fraser Resource Centre. And Dorothy was actually the first point of contact with Roger and Pat when they first connected with the Society when they called the First Link Dementia Support Program. So it was great to have them all together. And they continue to work closely together as well. This kind of long-lasting relationship is something that the Alzheimer's Society of BC can actually provide to help people face the challenges who are on that dementia journey. Last month, we also spoke to Dr. Dr. Robin Shung. Uh, he's an associate professor of neurology at UBC, and he spoke about some recent research as well. And that sort of brings us to today's focus. It's all about research. And we're inspired for the month of March by Brain Awareness Week. And we wanted to talk a little bit more in detail about some of the research that's being done in this province to look at the causes and potential treatments for dementia. Today, we will be talking to several amazing researchers doing such great work at UBC. But before we, we begin, I just wanted to remind you, if you ever want any information about the Alzheimer's Society, you can visit their website, which is alzheimerbc.org. So Maria, this week, it's all about dementia research. And how does this actually fit in with the goals of the society? Research is incredibly important. It's one of the strategic priorities of the society. Um, you know, our tagline is help for today, hope for tomorrow. And that hope for tomorrow is completely embodied in research. And the real um, support and uh, commitment to help uh, researchers uh, in BC and across Canada to have the resources and the tools they need to to help work forward to look for a cause and a cure for research. The, the help for, for today, which is also I think what we've been talking about a lot of the shows, is, is also um, absolutely important too and we we know that even if a, a cause or a cure for Alzheimer's was found today that people still are going to be living with the disease and need help and so I really encourage people to you know go to the website like you just shared with us Joanne but also our dementia helpline at 1-800-936-6033 is a great way to connect and get some help or ask some questions and and know where to begin. It's a good place to start but what about do you actually have like a department uh, within the society dedicated to research? We don't have a, a specific department, but it, it's interwoven into many things we do. Um, the money that we raise into our society, a good portion of that goes into research. Uh, we have people who are connected to a number of different researchers because we want to ensure that the information that they're learning that we are connecting and providing to families. We also think it's really important that families have a voice in research. Um, we hear uh, often from researchers that they need to understand the people who are living the journey, what makes sense for them. And so we also reach out and bring people together. The Alzheimer's Societies um, across Canada have a national program. It's called the Alzheimer's Society Research Program. Oh, okay. It's a national um, research uh, grant program where researchers can apply on an annual basis. And every year, 25 researchers across Canada are picked um, to, to receive funding toward their, uh, their research, which typically uh, focuses on 
quality of life and uh, biomedical uh, elements. Um, we're always proud that a good portion of those researchers are sitting in BC and we know that, that there's a lot of great work going here. The Alzheimer's Society of BC also has a professorship that we fund at the uh, University of BC, uh, the Fisher Professorship, and we're really proud of that um, because that is also focusing specifically looking on um, you know, diagnostics and biomedical support for Alzheimer's. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that too, because I was going to ask, what's the connection with UBC? It, it's a really wonderful connection with UBC. Um, the professorship has been there for a number of years, and it's our way of ensuring that we are contributing to the research committee or community and in, in bringing uh, much uh, needed dollars in, into that world. Uh, the brain center at UBC, the Mofagan Brain Center, is a state-of-the-art clinic um, that we support many patients who go to that clinic through our First Link program. So it's a partnership that we're very proud of. So today we have the opportunity to speak with three different researchers about some of the work that they're doing for dementia. And first off, we're going to meet uh, Dr. Mari DeMarco, who is going to be joining us in the studio today. Yes, we are, um, have a great relationship with Mari. We have a research program that we're hoping to support her in to grow forward. Uh, she uh, works at St. Paul's as well as University of BC and really brings um, a great knowledge in terms of, of diagnostics and better understanding how to look for things that can give people information early on so that people can get information early on to make choices and make decisions. And also from UBC, we'll have Dr. Cheryl Wellington calling into the program. Cheryl's uh, specialty, um, well, she has many. She's she's a very um, a very committed researcher in many ways. But but the the, the element that um, really supports well with our society is her connection between heart health and brain health, um, and really understanding how those two link. And certainly for families who are looking for um, a cause or a cure or a treatment, understanding that exercise and diet is an essential part of that is a really is a really important message. Well, I, I can't wait to hear some of the uh, information that she offers up with that. That will be uh, from Dr. Wellington's portion of the show, getting her perspective. Uh, we also have a third doctor speaking with us in our very last segment of the show. We're going to meet Dr. Larry Chambers. He's the scientific advisor for the Alzheimer's Society of Canada. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. That, that's right. Larry plays uh, a really great role for the Alzheimer's Society of Canada in providing information um, so that the societies, the provincial societies who are ensuring that we're providing families, helping the families with the best education and support have real information. Um, we all know that new studies come up all the time. We hear it on the news. We see it in the paper. Um, we wonder, is that real? Is that true? Should I pay attention? And Larry helps us meander through all those um, elements and helps us find the things that we should be focusing on. Oh, well, that's got to be a tough position big, to big be job. in. That you're, <laughs> you're stuck in the middle because we, there's not a day that goes by where we don't see something in the news, a new headline, some new diagnostics, some new research that's being done. And it's, it's, it's tough to be able to filter through all of that or, or even to find the accurate information to back it up. I think so. But I think it's also an amazingly exciting job because it's like looking in a a, a big haystack for that diamond and we know that one day we're going to find that diamond we know it's going to come and so he has a really exciting opportunity to be connected to so much research whether it's nationally or even internationally and and just waiting for that time that we see something and say hey this this is it we are really on a clear path so i think it's also a very exciting job so in your position as CEO of the Alzheimer's Society of British Columbia, uh, do you actually get to meet with these doctors? Do you brainstorm about their work? Do you uh, work together on panels? How do you actually interact with the, the work that they're doing, the research work or the clinical studies that are ongoing? Yeah, it's a great relationship because we have an opportunity to work together at conferences. We go and speak a lot to conferences, bringing the, the medical and the scientific element and then bringing the, the social and the behavioral um, information to families and to the communities to understand. When we talk about trying to make policy changes and changes in government, um, again, bringing the science and, and the art of how we help families is a really important message. Um, it, it also just influences where we put our time and effort. We spend a lot of energy raising dollars, and we want those dollars to go to the, the places that will make the greatest and the most immediate impact for families. So again, bringing those experts together and having that conversation, um, plus bringing families together, because they are the other expert voice in this too, uh, really makes us feel stronger that we're going to make some community changes. It's like closing the gap, coming full circle. Yeah. 
There's a lot of brain power in today's <laughs> show. I look forward to hearing more from our guests. This is Boomer Life. I'm Joanne Sutton. We're spending an hour with the CEO of the Alzheimer's Society of British Columbia. Maria Howard is here. We also have three top researchers working towards finding a cause and a cure for Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. We will meet them next on Boomer Life on CL 650. Celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CL 650.